Today I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit and what it is to be led by the Holy Spirit. And if there is something I love to talk about, if there is something I'm so excited about, then it's the whole part of being led by the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, in the first church, you saw that the Holy Spirit was an active part of the church. The Holy Spirit was the one who was working in the first disciples. He was leading them. And he wants to be part of our life and our churches today. I heard somebody said that if the Holy Spirit leaves the churches today, 90% of all the activities is going to continue like nothing has happened. And I believe there is something about that. And you're going to see that in this teaching where I'm going to share a lot of amazing testimonies of how we can be led by the Holy Spirit today, how God is working by His Spirit. And I'm also going to give you some practical tools you can use in your life so your life can be led by the Holy Spirit exactly as we read in the book of Acts. God bless you. Welcome to the Pioneer School. This is lesson number 12 out of 20. And today I'm going to talk about being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about how it is to walk by the Spirit, how it is to listen to the Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. And I love teaching about these things because some years ago, me and my family, we, uh, we got a taste of what God has for us when it comes to being led by the Holy Spirit. And when we tasted that, we just looked at each other and we said, this is what we want. We want this life. Because being led by the Holy Spirit is what it's all about. And it's so much more than just coming in a church on Sunday. And I believe many people have the idea that there is to be led. The Bible said that you can walk by the flesh and you can walk by the Spirit. So walk by the flesh is living in sin. And we agree in that. But then we think that walk by the Spirit is the opposite of living in sin. It's just don't do sin. So now I'm a nice person, I don't sin, I don't live in sin, and I come to the church on Sunday and I live my everyday life trying to not do a lot of things and come to the church on Sunday. But to be led by the Spirit is much more than just standing still and don't sin and come to the church on Sunday. To be led by the Spirit is to live a supernatural life. It's to walk by the Spirit. It's to go from one place to another. It's not to just stand still and not sin. It's to live an exciting life where the Holy Spirit is leading us in everyday life. And you're going to get a taste of that because in this teaching I'm going to come with a lot of amazing testimonies. And then in the end, I'm going to give you some practical tools that can help you to come in and walk by the Spirit and live the life. Before I'm going to start, I want to pray and then we are going to take some questions out of the last teaching I've come with. And, um, and then we're going to continue looking at what it is to be led by the Spirit. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this teaching. God, I, I pray that you help me to share this word. Pray that it's going to be a revelation for everybody who sees this teaching and it's going to open their eyes. And it's going to help them to come into the life we read in the book of Acts. That they're going to live a life led by the Holy Spirit, our everyday life, God. God, thank you because this is something you have for everybody of us. So help me to share this word and come with your spirit and open our eyes, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I have been talking about repentance, baptism in water, and baptism with the Holy Spirit. This is part of salvation. Everything is part of 
getting saved. When Peter stood up and said, repent, get baptized in water for the remission of your sin and, get, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Then he says that this promised promise is for you and your children and everybody God is going to call on. What promise? The promise of the new covenant. The promise that had been spoken by the prophet Joel. The promise that had been spoken for Ezekiel. The promise from Jeremiah. The promise from the old covenant uh, prophet that one day God is going to create a new covenant with his people. A covenant where he's going to put a new heart inside of us and give us a new spirit so we may walk in his statue, so we may walk with him. And that promise, he said, have to do with all of those three things. And the Holy Spirit is like the end of it, it's the fulfilling of that, the new spirit. So it's not like you, you get saved, you, you repent and you get baptized in water. And yes, you are safe. And if you want the Holy Spirit, like something extra, you can say yes to that. No, everything is part of salvation. And I've been teaching about that the last days. I've got a lot of response out of this teaching, out of baptism with the Holy Spirit. And a really good response. One of the emails I got was this. Hello, Tom. I've been waiting for this topic during the whole Bahia School. Since God revealed himself to me in a Pentecostal church, I want to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. But in our days, it seems like baptism with the Holy Spirit happened more seldom. Why? Especially during the Bible school, God has opened my eyes and there is still a Christian. Why is it in the book of Acts, it is so simple to get baptized with the Holy Spirit, but now it is so complicated compared to the book of Acts. I know brothers who have been serving God more than 10 years and asking for baptism with the Holy Spirit during all of those years, but have not yet got it. They are members of the church and are baptized in water. I personally miss this power of God in my life. God bless you. This is really a good letter, good questions. Why is it like that? Why is it like it is so simple in the book of Acts and so difficult today? The answer it was what I've been trying to work with during the whole pioneer school. The answer is our religion glasses. That we have a lot of teaching today that is not built on the word of God, it's built on tradition. We have a lot of wrong doctrines and we have a lot of fears. And at the same time, we build our doctrine on our experience instead of what the word is saying. And this is like I, I said, when it comes to healing, when it comes to every other things I've been looking at during the pioneer school, that we need to come back to the simple life we read in the book of Acts. And we have a lot of theology, a lot of knowledge, but there is not so much life. Why? Because the knowledge complicate things. And example is what we read here. Those people have been praying for God during 10 years and have not received it. And last time I talk about, and told about how my wife, when she was 10, 11 years old, she just went in, prayer, simple prayer, God, I pray that you give me the Holy Spirit, and immediately she got baptized with the Holy Spirit, she started to speak in tongues. Prayed one prayer in faith, in a, like a child. We have to be like children. And, and it's not about praying, 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 10 years. It's about simple faith. You don't have to pray 10 years to press through to get it. No, I think those people, what they need instead of just praying and praying and praying, they need discipleship and they need to get their eyes open and get the wrong doctrine out of their life. And if I met them, I will not say continue praying 10 years. I will say, let's sit down and talk. And then let's go through what the word is saying. Have you repentance? And it seems like they have. Have you got baptized with water? And they have. And then I talk about baptism with the Holy Spirit. And sit down with them and explain what it's all about. 
And this is what we need, the cyberchip. And again, I can come to a church, come to a meeting, I can speak for the pulpit. And there can come 10 people now up to me. I pray and five of them get baptized with the Holy Spirit like this. And then I can go for there and there was only five people who got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because why did, you know, why did the other five not get baptized with the Holy Spirit? Because it's all about discipleship. It's all about taking people from where they are right now and help them to take the next step. Some of them have maybe not repented. Some have not baptized in water and have something they need to deal with before they can receive it. Some of them just need to get the fear out of their life. And this is what I want. I want us to focus on discipleship. Instead of just having a, me a meeting, speaking for a pulpit, and then expect everything to happen, then we need to take people from where they are, sit down with them, and go through the Word and talk with them. And another lady, she's, also, she's writing this. Um, I have difficulty receiving the Holy Spirit, but I needed to be delivered. And she said that she, somebody talked with her and she burned all her old books, a lot of new age stuff she had. And two people prayed and she was delivered. About 15 minutes later, she write, I was getting in my car and driving home. I started to praise God in English. And then tongues just started to flow through me. And I stopped the car while I was enjoying this whole experience. So here we have a lady who's writing. She also didn't receive the Holy Spirit like this, but somebody did discipleship with her. Somebody sat down with her, talked with her, and she got to understand. They'll have some books, something she has not turned away from. And when she turned away from that, she at the same time got delivered from a demon. And when that happened, the Holy Spirit came like this. It just flow out of her. Like my wife, she was, my wife, she was, she didn't have so much to get set free from. She was a young girl. So she just prayed a simple prayer. This woman has something she needs to repent for. But when she had done that, she just prayed and I worship God in the car and it came like this. So I want to say, if you, if you don't have it yet, what we need is, of course, pray God in faith, but what we really need also is discipleship. What we need is to go back step one, step two, step three. Another is writing that, um, I've been praying for baptism with the Holy Spirit since Friday, but I have not yet experienced it. Unfortunately, there is nobody around me in my town who teaches about this, so I hope you can help me. And what I want to say that sometimes we have to do something extraordinary to get it. What I mean is that in the book of Acts chapter 8, the people in Samaria have not yet received the Holy Spirit. And when the apostles in Jerusalem heard about that, they traveled there to get to lay the hands on them so they can receive it. And what we need today often is to put, start, jump in a car and then go away. Go to somebody else than who you have been together with all the time. Go to another church, find another people, find some people who have it, who know about it and let them pray for you. Because this promise is for you. This promise is for your children. This promise is for everybody God is calling on. Okay, I'm going to talk about baptism with the Holy Spirit. Or being led by the Holy Spirit, sorry. And I love the whole part of being led by the Holy Spirit. And I can share a lot of testimonies about being led by the Holy Spirit. And I want to say next time I'm going to have a lesson here on the Pioneer School is in one, one month after uh, Christmas. So in one month, I'm going to come with the next teaching. And they're going to go one month because next Sunday, me and my family are going to South Africa. And like many other things, this is, have also to do with being led by the Holy Spirit. 
I think everything we we do have to be have to do with being led by the Holy Spirit. This is our life. When if we buy a car, if every time we have moved from one place to another, what we do, we see that God is in it and God is leading us by His Holy Spirit. And the way we come, came to Af South Africa, like the reason we're going to South Africa is because some months ago we were on, on a mission in Poland. And I was sitting in the car, I was driving, and on my way to Poland, my wife was sitting beside me. And she looked at me and she said, Torben, there is something I've been talking with God about, but I've not told you. And I was looking at her and said, what have you been talking with God about without telling me? I was like curious, what is that? And she said, I've been talking about with God about that I want to go away from Christmas. I don't want to be home this year. And the Christmas stress and the presents and all the, the things that is with Christmas. I want to go away, have some holiday as a family, and at the same time serve God, do something with a meaning, with a purpose. And I looked at her and said, yes, I want that. I'm open for that. And, and it came some, like a big surprise because uh, it was first time ever she said something like that with Christmas and go away. But I was open for that. But I said, but, 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 who wants to invite us for Christmas? Because every church, every person I know, they're closing down for Christmas. Because everything is about Christmas and presents and all the things. Nobody's having meetings, so who wants to invite us? And I said that to her. But I was open and we put it, lay over to God and prayed. Two hours later, I was in Poland, we were in Poland, and I checked my email, and there, there was an email to me from South Africa, where one guy wrote, Hello Tom, I want to invite you and your family to South Africa, Cape Town, two weeks in December. Come down, relax, have a holiday, sleep in our, swim in our swimming pool, and have some meetings with us, and train us, do you want that? And I was like, whoa, yes, I want that. <laughs> and we said yes to that. And I didn't hear from him long time. But then later, he sent some money to me. He just wrote, now I send the money, everything is okay. And he sent a lot of money because it cost a lot of money for us five persons to jump in a plane from Denmark and fly to South Africa, to Cape Town. And he just paid everything. So next Sunday, we are going to South Africa, Cape Town. And I love that because when we are there, we are not there because my wife prayed a prayer. We are not there because he invited us. We are not there because he paid for us to come there. We are there because God has sent us. Because my wife prayed, because the Holy Spirit led her to pray this. And we know if we pray according to the will of God, we have already received what we have prayed for. And it was something God put in Lene to pray. God worked in her and she prayed at the same time. God worked in a man in South Africa, we have not seen him yet. And God told him to invite us and he gave us the money so we could come there. And when we are there, we like many other things, we just know we are here. Exactly where we are called to be. Exactly where God wants us to be. Because we are not there out of an accident. We are not there because we choose in our own free will just to go there. We are there because God has led us there. Because the Holy Spirit has sent us. And I have a lot of stories like this, a lot of testimonies where you can hear how the Holy Spirit is leading, how the Holy Spirit is working. And I want to say that everything we do today, I can say like every big thing, now I'm not talking about going out and go to a shop and buy some food and, and what time we have to get up of bed, but every big thing like, God, what shall we do with this? What about, how shall we use our money? What about the pioneer school? What about the teaching? What about this invitation? What about the books? What about what you want us to? I can say that God is leading by His Spirit. 
And I'm so excited about the whole part being led by the Spirit. I'm going to tell a lot of testimony very short. Now we have to continue and we have to do what we always do when, it talk, uh, when we come to theology and teaching. We have to look at Jesus. So I'm going to start with looking at Jesus when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I want to say, of course, the Holy Spirit was a part of Jesus' life from the beginning. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was there by the be beginning. But at the same time, as I told Jesus, need to get there, baptized with the Holy Spirit. When John baptized him, the Holy Spirit came over him. And we can read about that in Luke 3. And after Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, we read this in Luke 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by the devil. So we read here that Jesus, after he got baptized with the Holy Spirit, was full of the Holy Spirit. And when he was full of the Holy Spirit, we read that he was led by the Spirit. And he was led in the wilderness where he was tempted. And I want to say that when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, there you're going to experience that you are getting full by the Holy Spirit. So baptized in the Holy Spirit is only one things that happen one time in your life. It's when you receive the Holy Spirit. But the Bible also says, and we're going to look at that, that we need to not get drunk in, in alcohol and other things, but let us get filled by the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 is saying that. So when we have received the Holy Spirit, we also need to do something to live in that. And this has to do with living close to God. Because when we use time to God, when we pray a lot in tongues, when we serve God, when we live there, we are going to experience that we are full by the Spirit. And, um, and what I want to take up here is that Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, but also that he was led by the Spirit. And the first place he was led by the Spirit was in the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. And there, when he came out of that, we can read this word, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out to all the surrounding cities. So after Jesus was tempted by the Holy Spirit in 40 days, when he came out of that place, he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe there is something, these three words, as I has, have here, this is my personal experience also, that we get baptized with the Holy Spirit and we can experience to be full by the Holy Spirit. And then this is also something we can live in by living close to God. We are full by the Spirit. And then when we are full by the Spirit, we can be led by the Holy Spirit. And when we are led by the Holy Spirit, the result of that is that we are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, what you need to do is get baptized with the Holy Spirit, or if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, come close to God. Use time and let the Holy Spirit fill you up from your innermost being is going to come out as living water. When you use time to go with God, with the Holy Spirit, and you learn to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you will see the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because when you are led by the Spirit, you know, <laughs> right here, right now, that right moment here, you are here not out of accident, because, but because the Holy Spirit has sent you. And when you know you are walking in what God has prepared for you to walk in, then you have a faith <laughs> that is stronger than any other things, because you know right now you are acting on the Word of God. Of course, we are acting on the Word of God when we go out. What Jesus is saying, each time we go out, what Jesus has commanded us to, when we go, also without we hear the Holy Spirit leading us, when we go on the Word of God, He's with us. We know that because the Word of God is the truth. But at the same time, we have a lot of fear in our life. 
But when you then experience that the Holy Spirit is there in a special way and leading you to that moment, the fear is not there the same way because you know, you know that you know that God has sent you and he's there right now. And I'm going to share some testimony about that. But Jesus, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, but he still took time to be together with God. And you will see that in Jesus' life. One time when he needed to choose his 12 disciples, we read just before that, in these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in praying to God. This he did just before he was going to choose his 12 disciples. We read other times where Jesus early in the morning went out. He came to bed before the sun, went to bed after the sun had went down. And early before the sun went up again, he went out to pray. So that night, I don't know if he got many hours sleep. And this night, all night he continued in praying. So this night he didn't sleep. Jesus, the Son of God, needed to take time to be together with God. He needed to get, take time to pray, take time to fast, and the same with us. If we want to not only experience baptism of the Holy Spirit, but if we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, and if we want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, what we need also is to take time in praying and fasting. Like Jesus did, and like other person did in the Bible or during church history. The secret, and I'm going to talk about fasting this next week, because for me, I can say fasting is, if somebody said, Tom, what is the secret for what you have experienced? And there is no secret, it's just about Jesus. But at the same time, I can say that fasting is special for me. Because each time I fasted, maybe 40 days or 20 days or, or other time, in other length, it had done something in me. It had be, become the beginning of something new. And Jesus took a period of fasting. And when he was fa had fasted, he came, returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when you really receive the Holy Spirit, one of the first things the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to is to come in in the closeness with God, to walk with God. The Holy Spirit is going to start to cut all the other things out of your, in your life so there is nothing left than God. And this is how he's working. Okay, now we look at Jesus and, and uh, we look at Jesus and now we are going to continue to look at the first disciples. And it don't matter if this is the first disciples or the disciples like you and me who is living today because Jesus is the same every day. And I'm going to go through the book of Acts now and just take some of the things you read in the book of Acts when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And I heard somebody said about the church today that if the Holy Spirit was going to leave the church today, 90% of all activities is going to continue like nothing happened. 19% of all the activities, activities in the church, the programs, the meetings, the worship, the preaching, is going to continue like nothing has happened. And to be honest, I think said is not is like that. Because most of what we do today have to do with our programs. <laughs> We do it because we have the programs, we have the money, we can do it. And we are not really dependent on the Holy Spirit. But if you go to the Buddha, book of Acts and see how the Holy Spirit was there, you will see that the Holy Spirit was working in everything. The Holy Spirit was him who was working in the church. But then during the Catholic Church, a lot of things changed. And one of the things that changed was that the Holy Spirit 
the Holy Spirit went out. And we got a big system and we are just doing things at the same time and the same time. And this is what we are building on today. But as you're going to see now, in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit was part of it. The book of Acts, we're going to start here. Book of chapter 5. We are his witness to those things. And so also is the Holy Spirit that God has given to those who obey him. I want to say that God has given the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. It's, the Bible says here. But what I want to do, say here is, we are his witness, also is the Holy Spirit. So it was not only them who was the witness, the Holy Spirit was also there. And they recognized that they were there, but also that the Holy Spirit was part of that. And we read something like this. The Spirit said to Philip, another place the Spirit said to Peter. Another place we read this. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So they also did that. The Holy Spirit said, Now appoint to me Barnabas and Saul to the work to which I have called them. So they were together, they were praying, they were fasting, and the Holy Spirit said, Choose those and those people to the work I have called them. Who have called them? The Holy Spirit have called them. Another place, for it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. When have you last been in a meeting where somebody had said, Oh, it seems good to the Holy Spirit and us, or the Holy Spirit and us are witness to this, or the Holy Spirit have said that we should call him and him to the work that the Holy Spirit have called them to. Can you see? It was not only what seems good to those people. It was what that seems good, good to those people and to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he, he's a person. He's the person in the Godhead. He's there. He's not just a power. He's just not an it. And sorry if I said that it, some, somebody said to me that I said it about the Holy Spirit, but it's because of my English translation. He's, he's not a it, he's a person. And the first church, they again again said, it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And they said something like this, and they said something like this. And we also read it, that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach. And they were led by the Holy Spirit. And I was, Paul is saying, I'm going to Jerusalem bound by the Holy Spirit. So at one time, we read that they were led by the Holy Spirit. Another time, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach there. Another time, they were led. Another time, it seems good for the Holy Spirit and us. The Holy Spirit and us a witness to this and this. And if you see through the book of Acts, this is just some other places, you will see that the Holy Spirit was a big, big part of the church, what was doing. It was not just a program, it was just, it was not, the, the leader of the church was Jesus Christ, working by his Holy Spirit here on earth. Jesus is in heaven, sit, sitting with God's right hand, and the Holy Spirit is here on earth. And he was not just a power, sorry, just a power to heal the sick out on the street. No, it was him who was leading the things, who was organizing, who was saying where to go, who to point out, where to not go, stop here, go there, choose them, choose them, do like this, do like this. It was not just leadership who sit down and, okay, what shall we do? I think we should do like this because I think it's a good idea. What about God? And for me, we can today experience the same with the Holy Spirit, that he's leading us. And I want to say one more thing because in the book of Acts chapter 6, 
They were going to choose some man who was going to help with the tables and other things so the apostle could take time with the word and praying. And you read that uh, they said, pick up seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and wisdom, who will be appointed to this duty. They choose Stephen, uh, Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, an other person, and you read that they prayed and laid their hand on them. So what they needed to do there was find seven men who was full of the Holy Spirit. Because what God wants to use today is people who's full of the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot do what we are supposed to do in our own power. No, we can do what we are supposed to do full by the Spirit. Well, I've written a lot of books. I don't write books because I'm good at writing. When I went out of school, I could not read. I could not write. I've never imagined I'm not going to write one book in my whole life. Because before I, became, before I became a Christian, I only read one book, small book. I could not read. But God has chosen me to, that, to do this thing. Why? Because I was taking time with him. I was full of the Spirit. And I know, I recognize today that what I do, I only do because he is leading me. I cannot do it in my own power. Nobody of us can serve God in our own power. So they was going to choose some man who was full of the Holy Spirit. And I want to say it was not because they have just got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because, but, but there were some people who have been living in that fullness. And again and again get full by the Spirit. And you can also read that in the book of Acts. That they prayed and the Holy Spirit came and filled them up again. And they take time with God. And because of that they were full by the Spirit. But what I want to say is that they choose the people who are full of the Holy Spirit. And after they chosen them, they lay their hands on them. So they didn't lay their hands on them to receive. I put it here. They didn't lay their hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit. They already have it. But there they lay their hands on them to recognize what God had already given them. I believe in laying on our hands when it comes to baptism with the Holy Spirit. When somebody lays their hands on you, you can get baptized with the Holy Spirit. You can receive the Holy Spirit, yes. But I don't believe that you have to run from meeting to meeting, from meeting to meeting, from meeting to meeting, from conference to conference, from conference to conference, after you have got the Holy Spirit, and let every man or woman of God lay their hands on you and pray for you. No. I don't believe that because I don't see that in the Word. I believe when you have received the Holy Spirit, then you have to walk by the Spirit. You have to be led by the Spirit out in the wilderness, led by the Holy Spirit so you can take time with God and then walk by the Spirit. And when you are full of the Holy Spirit, God is going to point you out and use you because He used people who are filled by the Holy Spirit. And that being fooled by the Holy Spirit. It's not coming by just going from meetings to meetings. No. It's coming by praying a price. It's coming by taking time to see God. And I'm going to share some testimonies now. And my testimonies here about being led by the Holy Spirit is not something that came like this in two seconds because I just, hey, I want that. And it didn't come because I went to a conference and somebody prayed for me and got a special anointing. No. I got the Holy Spirit like you and every other person who has the Holy Spirit. It comes by taking time to see God. Taking time to listen. Being led by the Holy Spirit in the small things so God can put us over more and more. Okay. They were led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was working. Now to my life. Some years ago, I was out camping, and uh, like every other thing, I prayed. And praying is more than just God do like this. Praying is a life, it's fellowship, fellowship with God. For many people, praying is like what I'm going to say now. 
I'm married to my wife. Try to imagine I have a small room and I put my wife in the room. And 20 minutes each day, I open the room, I go in, close the door, sit down with my wife, and then I just talk 20 minutes, boom, 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 everything that's happened. 20 minutes, thank you, go out, close the door again. The day after, open the door, go into my wife, close the door, talk 20 minutes, da -da -da -da, and then I go out again. One day she's knocking the door, I open the door and, and she said, I have something to say. Not, not now, tomorrow. And I close the door and the day after I sit down, I just talk 20 minutes, thank you, and I go out. And she said, I have something to say. Not now, not now. What marriage relationship is that? It's not a marriage. No. Because I cannot put my wife in a room and just use 20 minutes with her every day when it suits me. No. My wife needs to talk to me also. It's not only me who needs to talk to her. She also has something on her heart she wants to tell me. And when she needs to tell it to me, I need to be ready to listen. <laughs> the same time, there is times where I need to tell my wife something here and now and then she's ready to listen. But many, the, the same with God, Many people put God in a room and take him out five minutes, ten minutes each day, just talk, 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 and never give God time to also talk back. Because praying is not only one way, praying in two ways. It's not only us to talk to God, God talk to us. And praying is not going to a room, close your door only. This is also part of it. But praying is a life. It's an everyday life. And I want to show how I pray often. I was out camping some years ago, and when I pray, it's often like this. Hello, God. Oh, oh it was good. It was, it was really good yesterday. I like, what, what do you think about the meeting? Okay. Uh, hey, I got an email today. I, I don't know exactly what, what shall I write? I'm, I'm not sure because, what, what do you think? What do you think I should do? Hey, one more thing, um, what about this? I don't understand exactly what this, I, I, I pray God help me, help me to explain things. This is what I'm praying. I'm talking with God. I, I'm taking God into my life. I'm talking about the emails. I'm talking about the, the journey we are going on. I'm talking about things I'm struggling with. I'm for, uh, talking about the word of God. God, uh, what about this? I don't understand it because if God, if this is the truth, what about this then? This is the way I pray. And often I experience that God work in my prayer like God work in my life. Why, Flene? God put, the Holy Spirit put something in my wife to pray. God opened the door to South Africa. And I opened the door so we can go away for Christmas. It was the Holy Spirit in my wife. And when I was praying some years ago, I was walking prayer, I spirit the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And it came very clear, Torben, pray for open door to TV so you can go against evolution and Darby. And it was like, what? But, okay. Pray for open door to TV. It just came to me like out of nothing. It, it just came. The Holy Spirit put it in me. So I was like, okay. So I was walking, God, I thank you for open door to TV, God. God, I pray that you are going to open the door to TV, God, so I can go against evolution and Darwin, God. God, let, let the lies of Darwin fall down in our country. It was my praying. And I prayed that the next day I was out walking and I prayed the same, God, I thank you for open door to TV, God. I pray that you open the door to TV so I can go against evolution and Darwin. And while I was walking praying that, I saw a man there where we were out camping. And when I saw him, he was like, oh, this is this, is this man. He was a famous stand-up comedian. One I've seen on TV and TV program and commercials. And this stand-up comedian, you know, like many other stand-up comedians, is not the most holy word they're speaking. And, and also with him, it was not the holy word he was speaking. He was making fun with the Christian. And he was cursing all the time. And I saw him there. And when I saw him, my heart started to jump. Oh, oh. And I just felt, this is God. So I went to him. 
And when I went to him to talk with him, just one meter before I was there, he turned his face and I saw him in front. And oh, it's not him. And I was like, whoa, it's not him. It's just one who looked like him. And there God spoke to me. God spoke, say, pray for this guy. And his name is Simon Yule. And I'm like, what? Pray for Simon Yule. You mean the, the one in TV? Yes, pray for the right Simon Yule. I said, God, but I, I don't know who, I, I don't know where he lives. I don't know if he's living in Copenhagen or other places. God, I, I've just seen him in TV like other person and people. Pray for Simon Yule. Okay. So I continue praying, God, I thank you for open door to TV. So I go against evolution, Darwin, God, and I pray for for Simon Yule. And to be honest, it seemed crazy to pray for Simon Yule because I didn't know this guy. I'd just seen him on TV. So I was walking, God, I pray for Simon Yule, God. Send somebody to him. Speak to him, God. God, he needs to hear your word. He needs to hear the God. He needs to repent, God. Send somebody to him and open the door to TV. It was what I prayed that day. When I came home from prayer, two meters before I was home, I got a phone call. I took the telephone and somebody said, hello, Tom. This is from Danish TV. We are making a program about evolution and Darwin. We want to hear if you want to be a part of it. The one who's going to interview you is Simon Yule. The one I have just been praying for. We are 6 million people in Denmark, about 6 million, almost 6 million. God put in my heart that day to pray two things. Open door to TV so I can go against evolution and Darwin. And a guy I have just seen on TV, his name is Simon Yule. I prayed those two things, then the telephone called. Two weeks after, I was sitting in Copenhagen beside the right Simon Yule and his TV crew. And I was sitting there on a cafe and we were sitting talking and I said, Simon, I'm here because of you. I was praying for you that day when your secretary called me and God wanted you to repent. And, and he looked at me and everybody looked at me and they were in shock. I was the only one who was eating now. And I told the story and everybody was surprised and in shock. Then we went out to the middle of the street in Copenhagen and we are stopping people talking about God and evolution. And when we were standing talking with people, I saw a young guy came with crosses and the Holy Spirit just him, 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 him. And, and when I saw him, I knew it was God because the Holy Spirit led me. So I knew it was God. So I said, Simon, come with me, come with me. And we went to him and I prayed for this guy with crosses and he got completely healed. He could walk without crosses and I stood with the crosses like this. And Simon, he's not so tall, so he stood like this. He said, Tom, what is this? And I look, what do you mean? This, Tom, what is this? And I could say, this. Have you not read the Bible? This is what we read in the Bible. <laughs> Afterward, we went to a big museum in Denmark. A Solois Museum, it's, is it called. A big museum with a lot of... Uh, they have a lot of things about Darwin also, about the all missing link who is still missing. And there, in that museum, I was sat on a chair with two spotlights on me. And Simon Yule, he was sitting in front of me on a chair. And we were sitting a little high, we were sitting on a suitcase. So we had to come higher because there was some missing link behind me. They also want to see when they were filming me. And there Simon was sitting in front of me and I was sitting there. And in one and a half hour, he was asking Christian about God, about everything, about evolution. He said, do you really believe in Noah's Ark? Do you really believe God created heaven and earth six days, 24 hours? Do you really believe in this? What about DNA? What about this? If you, why, God is going to say you're going to kill your wife, are you going to do it? God, he said a lot of questions about God and evolution in one and a half hour. And I have a picture here. 
Here you can see me who's sitting, and there you can see the two spotlights on me, and I'm sitting on a suitcase there with a chair. And there is Simon Yule with the paper. And he's sitting there one and a half hour and asking questions. And here you can see one of the missing links behind me while I'm sitting and talking. And to sit there giving an answer for what I believe in was the best way to explain it, it was like being in heaven. Because in one and a half hour I knew everything. It was so special because every question I have an answer. And many times during the one and a half hour I was like, whoa, where did that come from? But I knew where it was coming from. The Holy Spirit. What is Jesus saying in Mark 13? He said, when they take you to trial, or it can also be other things, don't worry beforehand about what you're going to say. But say whatever is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Mark 13, 11. This is what I experienced that day. Somebody said to me later, and also before, Tom, why do you go to this program? You know it's stand-up comedian program. They're stand-up comedians. They want to make fun with you. And I could just say to them, I'm not going there because they invited me. I'm going there because God sent me. And no matter what every other person was going to say around me, I knew I need to go there because God has sent me. And it's so interesting when I was going to see the program because they almost forgot one thing. They almost forgot Darwin. <laughs> it, 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 there was a little of Darwin, but my testimony was what was feeling most in the program. Where I told how God led me and they saw how the young guy got healed with crosses and many hundred thousand saw that. And later I have met people who know me from that program and came to me and wanted prayer and other things. So this is one story about how the Holy Spirit can lead us. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today and forever. And He can speak to us and He can lead us. The same today as we read in the book of Acts. And there is nothing like being led by the Holy Spirit. And now I'm not only talking about ministry, I'm talking about everyday life. I remember some years ago, my daughter, she was 10 years old. She was going to school on a bicycle. She was going one and a half kilometers. So I said, goodbye, Stephanie. And she said, goodbye in the morning. And she went on her bicycle. So she went this way and I went this way to pray. And when I was walking there, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Stop, your daughter needs you. And I'm like, what? Your daughter needs you. No, no, no. I just said goodbye to her. Your daughter needs you. And then, oh, my daughter need me. So I was going that way, but the Holy Spirit says, stop, your daughter need me, you. So I would turn around and I was now running this way. And, and there was one and a half kilometers to school. About after one kilometer, I saw my daughter. There was like a small bridge and she was standing on the bridge. And I came there and she was standing beside her bicycle and crying. And I said, hello, Stephanie. And she looked at me, and she, the first thing she said was like, Father, what are you doing here? And I could then say, God said that you need me, and now, now I'm here. And it was really strong for her, because she saw me go that way, and suddenly I was standing beside her and could say that God told me, the Holy Spirit told me that you need me, and now I'm here. And he, she has some problem with the bicycle and I could help her go back. All I tell you, I tried many times where I was going to open the, the mailbox. And before I put the key in, the Holy Spirit said, there is something here you don't like, but no problem. I, I have everything in control. And I'm like, whoa. And before I open the mailbox, I'm like, what is that? And I open. And there, there was something I didn't like. One time there was like a, a 
bill for because we got some money from the, uh, the state here in Denmark with a house we had. And there was a bill that we had to pay a lot of money back and we didn't have that. And I'm like, oh no, but hey, God is in control. The Holy Spirit have warned me beforehand. So I just contact them and say, can you just check it one more time? And they say, yeah, we just check it and then we can come back to you. And this is now six years ago. And I've not heard anything and I've never paid the money. So the Holy Spirit can lead us in everyday life. And, and this is the life we are called to. It's of us. One more story. I want to share some testimonies to, to know how it's working. One more story. Uh, some years ago I was out in men's license and I stood talking with a uh, three, four young person. And there was a young guy who came there and stood beside when I was sharing the gospel. And when he came, the Holy Spirit said to me, you are going to be his father. And I was like, what? What? And, and it came as a total surprise for me. And I looked at him and, and I was like, whoa. And then he left again. <laughs> and I continued talking and then he came back again. And while I was finished talking, I said, okay, anybody here who's sick? And that young guy said yes, and he took his trousers off. He had a lot of bandits, bandits on his knee, and he said yes, today I fall on my scooter. And I have a lot of pain, I cannot bend my, bend my leg, I cannot walk. I said, look here. And I prayed for this guy, and he took the bandits off. And he was surprised. He took the plaster off, and he was standing like this. And the tears was coming out, and he said, no more pain. And I said, come with me. And I took him, and I didn't know this guy, and the first thing I said was, tell me about your parents. And he was so surprised, so he said like, okay, my, my father has died, have died, and my mother is very sick, she's going to die. And I can say, I've never seen you before, but when you came, God spoke to me that I was going to be a father for you, I'm going to help you. And he was so surprised, I was also surprised. And then I got his phone number and we was writing a little to each other, but he, he had only met me and it was so strong experience, so, so he was a little afraid to meet me again. But two weeks later, there came some people to me who was going to uh, become journalists. So they were starting to become a journalist. And they came to me and they wanted to interview me. And we were sitting on Burger King and talking and they were interviewing me. And, and then one of them said, hey, I have a camera with me. I want to, we want to go with you and see what you're doing on the street. Can we do that now? And I'm like, now? And I didn't know that. And to be honest, I didn't want it to do that. I wanted to go home and relax because I was tired. But because he said that, and I was like, okay, shall I? Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go to the city. So I jumped in the car and I went to the city. On my way to the city, I was sitting in the car and there I was praying and I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I, I felt like I, I look at my hands and I said, God, I pray right now, hand. Yeah, hand in bandits. God sent somebody, sent somebody to the street right now, God, who have the hand in bandits, who's going to get healed, God. Thank you, because it's going to be a testimony for those people in the name of Jesus. And it was what I prayed. We came to the street. I was walking there. We didn't find anybody right there who wanted to talk with us. And then I saw the young guy I met two weeks before. The guy God told me to be his father. I saw him say, hey, how are you? He said, hey, I'm fine. And then I saw he had bandits on that hand. And said, what is wrong with you? I don't know. It was yesterday. I got a lot of pain and, 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 and it hurts. Hey, I have some journalists, uh, people who are starting to become journalists. They, they don't believe in this. Can I pray for you? Yes, you can do that. It's okay, they're filming and you can say what happened two weeks before. Yeah. So they were filming him in the middle of the street. And he was telling them how he met me two weeks before, how he got healed with the knee. And then I prayed for him. And this time, the band is one more time. Not the knee, but the hand. And then tears in his eyes again and he said, it's gone. And it was really an eye-opener for them, and it was really strong for him. And then he was ready to meet me. And we talked again, and we uh, talked that we are going to meet later. 
And then what happened was I met somebody the day after a Christian and I just told the story of what God had done and how God had led me to this boy. And then he came to me and said, Tom, I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying to me, I should give you $200. Uh, this is for you and your son. And he gave me $200. I said, thank you, thank you. So I called this young boy and said, hey, I want to invite you out to eat. And he said, okay, let's go out. And I met with him now and I had the money, so we were out eating. And then he said, Torben, there's something I want to say to you, something special. Do you remember the day you meet, met me in the street when you prayed for my hand? I never go to the street. It was first time that day after school I went through the city. But I was on my way home, but I felt there was something inside of me who said that I have to go to the city. And there I met you. Can you see it? In that moment, I was praying in the car, God sent somebody with hand in the bandits. God led me to pray that because he knew that this guy, young guy, had the hand in the bandits. And God spoke to him, go in the street and we meet each other. And he got healed. And I got in contact with him. Two days later, he called me, Tom, I have problem. My scooter had just broken down and I got a new job and I cannot go, come to work because I don't have any scooter. But because I got the money, I came and he, I paid and it cost exactly what I got. And I could pay for his scooter and he went to job. So everything is, God is working. And this is what I like when it comes to being led by the Holy Spirit because I make, meet many people who's very skeptics atheists who are skeptics when it comes to God. And when we talk about healing, they're also very skeptics. Oh, no, no, no. And this is just something in the mind. They cannot. And, and they don't believe in it. Because that thing is something just in the mind. But when I start to talk, tell testimony about being led by the Holy Spirit, everybody's closing their mouth and everybody's surprised. Because it's not something I can just imagine in my mind. Because God can speak to me. But before things happen, God speak, had to speak to this person and this person and this person. And everything had to go like this. And this is what I like. And I've seen skeptics, non-believers after. There are many skeptics, non-believers who is getting their mouth closed when I start to tell about our everyday life with the Holy Spirit. And this life is not only for me. This is for you. Because Jesus said we have to get born again by the Holy Spirit. Not born of water, but of water and spirit. He's talking about repentance, baptism, water and the Holy Spirit. And in John 3, when he's talking about that, he's saying this. Do not marvel when I say to you, you must be born again. And then he continues saying this. The wind blows where the wind is and you hear it sound. But you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. He's talking about the wind. And I want to explain that. But look here. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus said we have to get born again. And he said we have to get born again by the Spirit. Get born again by the Spirit is like the wind. The wind, you know, don't know where it's coming from and you don't know where it's going. It's like that with everyone who's born by the Spirit. Or I can see, say, who's, being, who's walking led by the Spirit. Roman 8 is talking about. We are not walking by the flesh, led by the flesh, but we are led by the Spirit. And it's much more to keep away from sin is to live the life I just talked about. Being led by the Holy Spirit. The wind. What is the wind? The wind. The wind is blowing this way. And then the wind is blowing this way. And then the wind is blowing this way. And it's going back. So the wind is coming from here. And then the wind is coming from there. And then the wind is coming really fast from there and slow from there. 
The same is it with being led by the Spirit. God said, pray for Simon Yule, go to Copenhagen. God said, your daughter needs you, go back. God said, pray for this man with the hand in the, the guy with the hand there. And God said, God said to my wife, pray for open and uh, pray for uh, something in December. Go away and God talk to somebody in South Africa. And now we're going there. Can see this like the wind. We don't know every day where is we are going. We just know that the Holy Spirit is leading us. One day he said this way, then he said this way, then he said this way. And I want to say that this testimony I'm telling you, for us today can seem like, whoa, this is powerful, Tom. You are powerful. You, you experience a lot of things. No, this is every, this is normal. This is for everyone who's born by the Spirit. If you go back to the book of Acts, read about Paul, read about Peter, read about Ananias, read about some of the person I've been talking about during this Bible school. You will see that to be led by the Holy Spirit was not only for a few people. It's for everyone, and it's the same today. And I want to give you some, in the end here, I want to end up with giving you some practical advice, something that can help you to come into this life. Because there is something we have misunderstood when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And I want to say to you also that I got born by the Holy Spirit, born again, 18 years ago. But the first many years, I didn't experience what I'm experiencing now. And it's not because God is not speaking now. God has been speaking from the day on, I got saved, because everybody who's born again, everybody who, who is born by the Spirit is the children of God. And we have ears, but we have to use the ears to hear what God is saying. And from day on, day number one, I got born again by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was talking to me. The Holy Spirit was leading me. But I was not listening. I didn't know how to listen. And because I was not listening, there are so many things I didn't do. And when I think back, it's so sad. Whoa, all the things I've been missing, missing out of. Because I didn't listen. Because I was walking my own power. Because I was doing what, what I thought to do instead of listening to what the Holy Spirit was saying. There is so much we have been missing out of. Because we don't know how God is working. Because we don't live the life we read in the book of Acts. We don't make disciples. We don't train and equip each other. And I've been missing out of so much. But some years ago, I tasted what it is to be led by the Spirit. And I look at my wife and she look at me and we say, this is what we want. And we changed our, total, our life. We went it totally upside down. And we changed a lot of things so we could have time to seek God and listen. And in my book, The Last Reformation, you can read a little about my story, how we had a house and we give it all up and we live very simple because we needed to have time to see God. Because like every other person, it's not like I just hear voices all the time. No, it's difficult to, to hear. It's, it's, it's not like I'm, I'm better to hear than other persons, but I have been training and this is the difference. I want to say something about praying. I have never heard God speak to me with a, a loud voice. When God speaks to me, He speaks in my mind. Every story I have just been telling you now, where God has been speaking, pray for Simon Yu, pray for open door, pray for this, do that, go this way. Every story has just been in my mind. What? Yeah. And this is often what we misunderstand. Because when we read in the book of Acts or in the Old Testament and other places, when the Holy Spirit led, we think, yeah, yeah, it's so easy to live there. It's so easy to do it because they don't doubt. They just knew it's God. But I want to say, 
I don't believe that you will ever know with 100% certainty that it's God who's speaking. Because then it's not by faith. God wants everything to be by faith. And every time I've been telling story about God have spoken to me and the Holy Spirit said that, every time it was by faith. I got a thought and I have to choose and if, they, if I believe it was God or not, and I have to act on it. And this is how I started. I remember some years ago, I was out walking, and I, and I started to take time to like, okay, I need to see God. I need to, to come in and learn to listen to God's voice. And I was walking and I saw there was a forest and in the end of the forest and there was a field and in the end of that field there was some people who was working. And then I got a thought. Go and talk with them. And I was like, no, 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 no. Go and talk with them. No, 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 it's just me. And it's like every other things I hear, I just, the first thing I say is just me. But no, maybe it's God. No, it's just me. Is it God? And what could I do there? There was only one thing I could try. I cannot say, God, if you, please. <laughs> no, it don't work like that. God had been speaking one time and then I had to find out if it was God or if it was not God. So I decided to try. So I went there and I was really nervous and I said, excuse me, excuse me. And I, can I talk with you 10 minutes? There were some people sitting and eating who was working in the forest in the five minutes. And I just shared a testimony and said, thank you. And then I went. I was so afraid. And when I went for there, I said to myself, oh, it was just me. Because nothing supernatural experience. It happened. But I thought it was just me. But what happened was one week later, there came a girl and said, hey, hey, can I say thank you, thank you? And I said, thank you for what? My brother is a falling away Christian. He was working in a forest. And someday you came and talked to him and now we have come back to God. And I was like, whoa, nice. So I thought it was me, but when I heard she says that, said that, I suddenly knew it was God. And then later I experienced something similar. And because I had the experience for last time, I could like, okay, and it helped me to tune in, to recognize, is this thought for, for me or is it for God? And for example, if my wife is calling me from another telephone, I take the telephone, she can say hello, and I say, hey, hey, Lena, why are you calling for this number? I don't know whose telephone is that? Because I have spent a lot of time with my wife and I know her voice. But if other people are calling and say, hello, it's me. And I say, uh, who is you? Because I don't recognize their voice. The same way with God. If we want to get better to recognize his voice, we have to be quiet and we have to listen. And also take some chances. Because if you get a thought, you have to try, God, is that you or is it me? Because God for me is not speaking loud like this. God is not speaking loud like this. God is speaking to my head with a small thought. But the way I recognize it is that, hey, where did that come from? Why do I just think? It's not like I'm sitting and focused and thinking, this is like wrong. We, we don't have to use our mind to get it. No, we have to worship God. We have to focus on him. And then suddenly there came a thought. Hey, God, this is you. So we have to practice. This is discipleship again and again. It's all about discipleship. You start where you are and then you practice and you become better and better and better and better to listen to God, to do other things. But at the same time, it always takes faith. You have, always have to believe and take a step by faith. But Hebrews chapter 5, when it's talking about a new believer, old Christian, a mature Christian, it said that a mature Christian is those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you get your senses exercise, exercise by reason of use. You use it again and again. So we need to exercise our senses so we can concern what is from God and what is not from God. It's so simple like this. 
And it's like when Jesus is talking about praying in Matthew, he said, but when you pray, go into a room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in the secret. And your father who sees in the secret will reward you. What I want to say here, pray to your father who is in the secret. God is not like taking God, sit him on a chair, sit down with him, say, God, what about this? Okay, what about this? What about this? We are not talking to God like one man talked to another man. It's not like that. It's by the Holy Spirit. And the way we learn is by exercising, using what God has given us. Like I did. I got a small thought, is that God or is it not God? Then I try and know it was not God. Then another time, yes, it was God. Yes, it was God. Yes, it was God. And then I, I learned and after time it became easier for me. And it is easier to recognize what is God and what is not God. And I want to say that God speaks to our mind, but at the same time, I want to say that the Satan can also speak to our mind. That's why we need to try everything by the word of God. If God say, if you get like, go and pray for him, go and do something good, you can do it without a problem and try. But of course, if you hear something bad, don't do it. And go to the word of God and always get things confirmed by the word of God. And by the spirit inside of you, the peace, do you like, okay, is that a good thing or is it not a good thing? Because every good thing is coming down for God. So I want to say that. And it's not like we, we have to, to I, I don't be, believe that we have to like, okay, talk, uh, stop, uh, speak God, speak God, speak God and do things. Because then your mind is going around. No, just take time. Use on God. Talk with him. Be together with him. Focus on him. Thank Jesus. And then a good thing, I believe, if you really want to come in to be led by the Spirit and know what God is saying, is throw your TV out. It has helped me a lot, to be honest. Throw it, if you are watching TV more than one or two hours or sitting every day, throw it out. If you are listening to radio the whole day, throw it out. When you are listening to music the whole day, throw it out. Why? Because if you are seeing TV or music and radio, when you go from there, the last thing you hear is still going into your mind, spinning. You still hear the last song. You still hear what they've been talking about. And that, together with you talk with people, you have a lot of Voice is a lot of activity in your mind. And because you have a lot of things in your mind, it's not easy to say what is God and what is all the rest. So we need to get rid of many of those things and learn something we don't like in the West is to be quiet. Learn to just listen. Learn to just take time and just be quiet with God. Just talk with him. Don't have a lot of things happen all the time. Take time. Take time. It's all about taking time. But Jesus, he was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days. And then he came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. 40 days. Yeah, but I don't have time for that. I want to say that everybody of us have the same time. 24 hours. It's all about what we choose with our time. Some years ago, I said some years ago, we had a house, we have a car, we, I was working a lot, I was doing a lot of things. But then I tasted what it is to be led by the Holy Spirit. I got an experience and I said, this is what I want. I want this life. And because I, was, I wanted that life so much, I changed a lot of physical things around me who helped me to get more time. And one time, we have been living in a big house, have to earn a lot of money. Later, we was just living in a small basement with three kids. But because we changed everything, we got more time. Time to be quiet. Time to seek God. And everything I experienced is, have not come for free. It don't come like this. 
It's not like you live like every other person, then you experience a lot of other strong things. No, you get what you pay for. You do. We choose what do we want. I have fasted 40 days many times. I have taken time to God. I have wa- I walk often a lot. Just pray. Because like every other person, it's not easy for me to hear God speak. But because I have taken time to exercise concerning what is good and evil, it has become so much easier for me now. But I still need to learn and I'm learning every day. So this, what I've been teaching about here is that we get baptized with the Holy Spirit, but we need to be full by the Spirit. We need to live in that fullness by taking time to God. And then we need to be led by the Spirit. We need to have time to be led by the Spirit, to listen. We need to also move. We need to take some chances and learn by using, by exercising. And when we do that, we are going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, as you see, the Holy Spirit was part of the church. The first church and the Holy Spirit is part of the church today because he's the same. And this is for everyone. This is for you. This is for me. This is for everyone. So I hope you got something out of this teaching. And I want to encourage you. Take time. Take time to just be together with God. Take the, the other things that are disturbing you, all the sound in your head, all the things, just take time, throw it out. Take some fasting, where it's you and God together and just reading the word and just praying. Word and praying and you and him. And then you will see that God is starting to speak to you clear and you take some step in faith and you recognize, oh, it seems, when God was speaking, it seems like that. And next time, yeah, it's God again, and next time, and next time. And then we can start to lift the fellowship where God put something in our heart and we pray it and it happened. And God put something and we pray and it happened. It's all about the will of God. I don't say like, we go to South Africa because God put it in my wife's heart to pray this, these things. It's not like, oh, we just pray because my flesh want it. Oh, I want to go on holiday. I just want to have a new car and I want to have that. I don't believe in that. I believe when we pray according to the will of God, then we know that we already received what we prayed for. But we have to know what the will of God is. And that's come by work, living with God. And next time after the break, after the break here where we're going to South Africa, I'm going to talk about fasting. And this is an important message. I'm going to talk about fasting and and giving you some tools about fasting. And if you have questions out of this teaching, come with it. And I'm going to start with that next time. And then after fasting, I'm going to continue uh, Luke 10 and other places in the Bible. So God bless you. In the end, Lena is going to sing one of Lena's songs. And you heard it before, but just let the word speak to you out of this message because... Is your life and many things. I know it's radical, but how much have God been speaking to you the last years, but you have not been able to listen? And because you have not been listening, you have not received what he have, have for you. The testimonies you have lost, the experience you have not got. But God has so much more for each of us. And the first many years I was Christian, I didn't see this life. But then I tasted a little of it and I said, this is what I want. And now I'm seeing it more and more. It's not because God is speaking more and more. It's because I'm getting better to listen. I'm getting better to act on what he's given me. And I believe if you act in faith, God is not going to look at you and say, hey, what did you do? It was not me who's speaking. No, he will say, look at this sky. Look at this girl. Look at this woman. And then he will help you so you can recognize the voice of God. So don't be afraid. Start to do something. Ask God every morning also, God, help me today. Give me something. Talk to me. I want to be open. And then take some step in faith. At the same time, seek God. 
Okay, my wife is going to sing and look forward to next time where I'm going to talk about fasting. Bye bye.
I'm coming back.